Welcome back to Perspectives on Arise News. Our second conversation, on the other hand, is more somber. It is societal expectations of people's approach towards death. As we all know, immediately after a death, those left behind often feel shocked, numb, and in denial, particularly if the death was unexpected. The recent loss of Herbert Chizaba and Chizi Bigwe, and also Bimbo Banjo, has thrown the nation into mourning. The reality of the deaths is painful, constant, and overwhelming, especially for those who the departed played a pivotal role in their lives. But in the midst of our current loss, there seems to be a shift in embracing grief, a rush to move forward because of the normalcy that sweetly resumes around us. And even though life has always marched forward regardless, honoring those we have lost is a mark of respect for their departure. <clears throat> but we have been joined on this segment of Perspectives by Ife Dayo or Larry Day, popularly known as Daddy Freeze, who commenced his radio career in 1996. Daddy Freeze then joined Cool FM in 2001, working in radio presenting, television, and general entertainment. He was a senior broadcaster at Cool FM in Lagos. Daddy Freeze is an event compare and has hosted a number of music concerts, comedy shows, Nollywood premieres in Nigeria, Ghana, and the United Kingdom. In 2013, he became the first Nigeria to win an award at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards in California, United States. That is, Freeze is a scripture scholar and the lead pastor and convener of the Free Nation Online Church, which holds Sunday and weekly teachings and services. In 2020, after 20 years at Cool FM, he started his own platform. So, online platform. So, so good to see you. Um, so good to uh, see you too, Ruth. I hope your bullets are not going to be so vicious today. Oh. No. Uh, maybe it's, they can be this small. Eh? Uh, yeah. Now, I'm, I invited you because of this controversy that has been going on air. And that was because Pastor Siju, Siju Uliyomade had a 60th birthday party um, mm -hmm. recently, last week, Saturday. Now, a lot of people frown, uh, frown, are frowning upon it, depending, depending on what side of the fence you're sitting on that Herbert was a great benefactor of that church. In fact, I remember the husband in one of his um, um, write-ups about Herbert said that when they went to start God's Children Great Talent Project in their church, Herbert himself spent about 500 million naira on the project to raise talent. Mm. And also for years, Herbert has been quietly paying the salaries of the classical choir for years. So naturally, if Herbert and his wife were members of that church, Pastor Yudhi Yamadi, both husband and wife would be like the spiritual parents Mm. so to speak, of Herbert and his wife. Mm. So a lot of people felt that to a certain extent, she should have either, because she had the grace of one week mm. to decide what to do, mm. that she should have either postponed the party or, you know, toned it down. Mm. So I just want to ask your opinion on that. <laughs> Many people believe they are spiritual children, but in the real sense, they are spiritual orphans. Uh, the day you realize that church is a business, and nothing but a business, that day your life begins to get better. I say this all the time because I remember an incident. I was on stage emceeing for um, some uh, member of Jonathan's former cabinet. I've forgotten his name. And I was on stage. Patience Jonathan, the former first lady, was mm -hmm. in the crowd. And we, it was on 12th of June. I've forgotten the year. And right in the middle of the program, somebody mm -hmm. just came and announced that there's been a plane crash. We ended the event. Patient Jonathan immediately said, no, 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 cut, 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 event. And mm -hmm. she moved immediately. This, this was an event in full bloom. It wasn't even, uh, imagine if it was a day before the event. Of course, that event is canceled. Mm -hmm. Let alone, it, right in the middle, we, we could have just said, you know what, let's just continue. We've started the event. Mm -hmm. People, guests are here. From, from across the country, I was paid to do a job and it was about one quarter into the event. The event was just beginning to get a heartbeat and they canceled it. This is a secular event. Yeah, but I mean, you're, you're making me feel a, a bit guilty when you say that because this also, I also experienced the same thing. It was at, I was doing my makeup, my guests were downstairs when I heard the news. Are you any of their spiritual fathers? Well, no, not really, but maybe, that's, that's why there's this controversy, because some are saying that, look, you had a week mm. in advance to cancel. It's not mm. like it happened where you, you know, right there and then when you were hosting or when people had come for your event. So uh. do you really think that, 
Do, but do you think she's? Don't you think she's been a bit unfairly judged in that in that aspect? That to she be honest, ahead? I would say she's a bit unfairly judged because you are judging her believing that there is a spirituality in Nigeria's church system. You are judging oh. her based on thinking she's like Christ. You are judging her based on uh, your understanding and expectations of a Christian. Mm -hmm. In my humble opinion, most Nigerian pastors are business people. The church is a business. The party is a business. They have, they have well, to don't go you think their business. That's, that's been a bit harsh. Because no. some people also say that pastors mourn losses differently from how do you mourn a loss when that you're throwing a party spiritual, that they're what deeper, spirituality that explain they it to see me. you as ex going to a better place oh really so, to them it's not as if yes that this man died with his wife yeah and his first son if the man and his wife are going to a better place what about the heir to his to to his empire how can a man if he died alone, we understand. He died is the most is the most mournful death yes, I've yes, heard yes. of. In in I don't know him. I'm not a fan of his, but I still felt it. It's it's painful. A man, his wife, and his son. first son, and and another another person, and another them, person. But yes. but you see, the other person died alone. Yeah. This man. one died with his wife and his son. Do you, so do you think that she should have maybe played it down? To a certain extent, do you think that would have made it less um, insensitive? I think they should have just cancelled the event. But you see, like I'm saying, we need to learn to manage our expectations. That is us expecting something of someone we believe is uh, teaching what... If I asked you, would you think Christ would have gone ahead with that party? Maybe not. The reason why I think it has is ignited what is so much fear. The followership the or followership, the following of Christ. Some, but, I, but there has been a pastor who, when his wife died, he still went for a service, a, a service for a woman who lost her child. Service he is too different. He was harshly judged. Service is different. Okay. Humanitarian. Do you understand? Um, yes. You are going to preach the word of God. You okay. have gathered people to, to teach them about God. That I understand. Not a party. Do you realize that in the entire Bible, I say this all the time. I study scripture in original languages, Hebrew, mm. Aramaic, mm. Greek, Latin. Then before we start studying English, mm. there is no example of any holy man of God or Christian ever to celebrate a birthday. Let us start with that. There are three birthdays mentioned in scripture. The first one was properly mentioned, the birthday of Pharaoh, who we all know worshipped the sun god. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Pharaoh wasn't a man of God or a creator. He was a pagan Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. The second were the children of Job. Uh, the New International Version said it was their birthdays. Other Bible translations said they were celebrating their days. So we cannot hold it as a proper birthday. Mm -hmm. And each time they did these, their days or birthdays, depending on the translation, Job will have to offer a sacrifice to God to mm -hmm. appease him uh, just in case they sinned. And the third example we get from Herod, where John the Baptist's head was severed as a gift um, to his stepdaughter, who danced in a flirtatious way, and the mother, Herodias, asked for the head of John the Baptist. Mm. So, birthdays, and there's no example of any disciple or apostle or Christ or uh, Isaiah or Jeremiah. The Bible says, number your days. Nigerians have translated number to celebrate. Number means count. If I tell mm. you to number the items in this room, are you going to celebrate the chair, the TV? No, number means count your days. It doesn't mean throw a party. I'm not against. I was just going to ask, are you against birthdays? No. Okay. I wouldn't celebrate a birthday, especially you, a birthday. You don't normally? I don't. As a doesn't mean I won't attend yours. No, but do you not celebrate birthday because no, you don't believe in it? because I don't believe in it. And if I'm preaching the word of God, birthdays, I've tried to defend it, is, is from pagan origin. Celebrating your birthday. Okay. I don't mean throw a shout out to someone or visit them at home, but that actual birthday feast is of pure pagan origin. Okay, I have to ask, you know, do you think the mantra, life goes on, mm. shortly after a bereavement, and the speed in which people do move on, is insensitive and unfairly downplays the bereavement. <sighs> because we have this habit of 
Um, life let goes me ask. On, life goes on. Let me ask you a question. Can we question. do that immediately? Is it right to do it so soon after the bereavement? Let me ask you a question. If it was her son, her physical, biological son, that passed on in that crash, would she do her birthday? Mm, that's a good question, actually. So I, I, I say this all the time, my sister. Especially as she's a spiritual, supposed to spiritual see, mother. There's, there's, a, there's a different, I, 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 I hope I'm allowed to say this, but Nigerians think they're spiritual children. Meanwhile, they're spiritual orphans and some even spiritual bastards. Elaborate. Your pastor, when he goes to eat, he eats with his children. He rides with his physical children, his biological mm -hmm. children. You understand, his estate is divided among his physical children. Mm -hmm. The spiritual children are spiritual children when the going is good. You see, if you, you have well, a maybe son. not necessarily so. Oh, yeah. Because I know, pastors are also confidants. I'll tell you something. No, I, don't, I, I, I think that's a bit extreme. I think some of them actually have Can I share even an closer relationships with their congregation that they do with probably their, their, even their, some of their children. Can I share an experience? Yeah. The late Dan Foster, may his soul rest in peace. Mm -hmm. We used to MC something for church mm -hmm. every year. When Dan Foster was high up there, he was always called, you know. The moment he left to the other radio station and it seemed like his career was no longer, mm -hmm. I just noticed that they stopped calling him. Who stopped calling him? I'm not going to mention the name of the okay, pastor. As in but the church, because eh, I kept going. Mm. That was when my own career started rising small by small. So I just noticed that he was dropped. They would dro he didn't do anything wrong. It's not like he sinned. Or he just wasn't happening anymore. I've seen mm. people who are broke. I know someone who donated his car to the church. When he had money, then he lost his job. And before you know it, he'll pick his pastor and pastor will not pick his... He'll call the pastor and the pastor won't pick his call. Well, but I don't think all pastors are like that. You can't really paint everybody <laughs> in the same brush. You know, I had to play the David Abdi. No, I, I understand what I you're saying. I don't think, I, because I think that some people have very strong relationships with their pastors. This is an example of one now. Party yeah, went Yeah, on. that's what I'm saying, that it does leave a bit of a sad taste for what now happens. Because the truth of the matter is that at the end of the day, whether I would like it or not, Herbert was a very prominent figure of that church, as was his family. Mm. And whether the Pastor Shidjali likes to admit it or not, it does come across as being mm. a tad insensitive. Uh, but that doesn't now mean that you should judge her as a person because she might have still been mourning him, but still proceeded to go ahead with what she wanted to do. I think I saw pics from the birthday. Yeah, but they're smiling. like anybody doesn't... there was warm morning. No. You don't know what no, morning but is. You wear ash cloth. No, but they're smiling. No. It doesn't necessarily mean that when, when, when David lost his son, in the Bible, okay, let's leave Jesus. Jesus is mm -hmm. too um, Yahushua, which is his real mm -hmm. name. He's too extreme for us to follow. At least when David lost his son, the son he and Bathsheba had, he dressed himself in rag and rolled in, in ashes. You understand? That's what we understand mourning to be. Which one is party of mourning? Ah. Let's mourn the Nigerian economy because uh, <laughs> right now. No, but do you really think parties. that she deserves the backlash that she's getting now? Like I said. She can also say that that was an opportunity for her to celebrate with her loved ones because the event has been planned months ahead and it was impossible to cancel or whatever. You know, I don't know this lady. This, no, we're um, just judging now based on perception. Uh, I don't know her. I, I heard of her for the first time in, uh, in this. And I, I always say she's a bit of... I didn't, I didn't feel bad about it because in my humble opinion, church is a business. So the business goes on. Okay, so you didn't judge It's just the way Access you. Bank... Three days later, don't announce wigway replacement. Mm -hmm. No need for, it's business. Same thing with the church. The church is a business. We have an event. People are going to come on the event and give money. You know, it's, so do you think she was rightfully or wrongfully judged? I think she was wrongfully judged because you are judging from a point of expectation. You are expecting somebody to, to be okay, a, a spiritual father. You understand, or a spiritual mother. You are expecting somebody to be... Um, walking with Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? But me, I know that church is a business, so I don't feel that they did anything In other words, wrong. you're not disappointed. I'm you're not. Saying. So it's those that I manage my expectations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wish her a happy birthday. May God continue to guide her. You know. And no, but in your, in, 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 from, your, from your perspective, yeah. I mean, who is anybody to judge how anybody should mourn a loved one? Yes, you expect that, yes. You the Bible you says, but who is anybody celebrate to with those who are celebrating and mourn with those who are mourning. Okay, but how long is a mourning period? That's, that's another <laughs> Definitely not a week after. 
<laughs> listen, listen let's use Igbo tradition. If uh -huh. you lose your husband, you are supposed to shave your head mm. and be in mourning for two years, one year. I, I remember studying it in sociology in the university. That's a mourning period. If she lost her husband, if it was her husband on mm. that plane, mm. and her husband was an Igbo man, it would be required that she shaves her head. So ideally, you really think that she should have postponed? No, Maybe because not I manage cancels. my expectations. No, 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 I okay. don't expect. Forget your expectation <laughs> of disappointment because you yeah. don't believe in them. I'm talking, okay, on, on average. Yes. Would it have been better for, for public perception for her to have postponed or toned down the event? Which do you think would have made a better impact? If it was me, that's me. Like I said, I'm not in a position to judge anybody. Mm. If it were me and somebody that pivotal, we, I have people in the Free Nation Church who are pivotal, people who, if we're having a church event, they'll bring their cars, they'll mm. offer to pay for things. I don't think I'll go on with my birthday mm. if one of those people who, if it was just a church member, we, during the birthday we can have a minute of silence, mm -hmm. but not someone who but like i said i mean no place to judge but if it was somebody that you were you knew but you were not that i mean not, if person didn't play a pivotal role in your life but it was yeah. somebody that you knew would you have stopped your event no okay no not for somebody i don't know no but somebody but you somebody know that but... I'm, yeah because do you know how many people i know that means okay, i'll be stopping true. every single event that's true I think, I, think, I think basically what it is is that she had the luxury, unlike me, she had the luxury of a week, mm. do you understand, to really, you know, maybe cancel or tone it down. Then number two, a pivotal role was played by the family that was lost. Mm. So I don't know whether she was ill-advised. What do you think? Do you think she was ill-advised that, you know, she, 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 maybe if she had somebody tell her is, is, how it will come across as or the backlash that will come after it do you think that that might have helped in her decision making it, it, it's just going to look like me and you are you are chasing me around circles <laughs> i'm going to come back to what i said you know from my humble opinion from my understanding of scripture from my years of study i see today's church as a business venture and a business venture so I don't see the ill advice. Maybe one or two people would have said, but uh, I can't judge her. No, but then again, forget even the church. Let's not even talk about humans yes. by nature. Who are we to judge people based on how the pace in which they move on after death? Mm. Just because you've moved on much faster than I have, or I have moved on much mm. faster, doesn't mean that I feel the pain less than you. Mm. Do you understand? Some people mm. mourn differently from others. Some people are expressive with their mourning. Some are not so expressive. So who is society to judge and say, oh, this happened, so for three months, you should not be seen outside, or for two months, you should not be seen outside. Mm. And then if you now decide to go out like a week after or two weeks after, who mm. am I to judge you? In Don't you the, think that's also unfair or to a certain extent a bit extreme? In the attention economy and the attention ecosystem that most businesses thrive on, mm. uh, it is important to be visible. Okay. So if we go back to my formula that this is a business and the business needs to be visible and mm. they, just the way the access bank, ah, we are sorry, oh, we've lost our MDA, this is the new one. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is, and this is to all spiritual children out there, use this as an opportunity to ask yourself this question. See, I'll be gone from this program in two or three minutes. But let these words live with you. Are you a spiritual child or a spiritual orphan or even a spiritual bastard? Can you, can you define those three categories? A spiritual child is treated like a biological child. If you lose your biological child, you're not going to throw a birthday. If you lose your first, even if you lose your last boy, even if you lose the one that is on drugs, that has mm -hmm. given you problem all your life, you are still not going to go ahead and throw a birthday party. One, a spiritual child, a true spiritual child. You, you, you see, um, some people came to Christ and um, they were at the door and said, your mother and your brothers are here. And Christ said, no, those who listen to my message are my mothers and my brothers. So he treated his 
uh, spiritual children, if I could use that phrase, mm -hmm. exactly how he treated his biological family. Mm -hmm. And he handed over his mother to one of his sons. You, that's your mother from today mm -hmm. on the cross. So uh, we need to understand that a spiritual child should be treated. Okay, so some, what is a spiritual bastard? A spiritual or bastard a spiritual is the orphan. one that thinks that is the child, but is only, in, is, is only inside his mind that he's a child. In, in reality, his DNA does not match the DNA of the person. He's, not, he's just there. The orphans are the ones that they don't even have access to these parents. They're just there in church. Everybody shout hallelujah, hallelujah, the loudest hallelujah, hallelujah. But no connection with the No connection at all. Pastor. So my question is, if you go to a church, reevaluate your relationship with that church in times of need are they there for you do if if you were the one who was so pivotal in this church you gave you put choir on salary mm. you give 500 million you did 500 million that you could have used to do other things you gave to th this church and then you passed away in such a tragic way with your wife and your son your first son, the head to your empire, and then a party goes on. How would you feel? Mm. When you say, okay, I feel okay, then you have managed your expectations. So if something yeah. happens next time, you say, oh, well, I'm cool with it. Thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you so much, Dr. Fresh. I knew this thing was going to be very controversial. And of course, you know, for my hand, <laughs> but I'm hoping that, you know, we all would learn a lesson from what you have just said. And mm. maybe, you know, just be more um, observant of things, of things around us. So thank you so much for being with us here on Perspectives that is, that is free, and I hope that we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. Now, as we know, fame is everywhere. The truth of the matter is, when we, when we lose somebody, it is a very painful experience. It is also something that we'll learn a few lessons from. What I want to say today is that at the end of the day, to get a very close connection with your maker and maybe rely less on people but I, do, I still believe firmly that when you mourn, the way you mourn the loss of a, lo the loss of a loved one, it differs. And I don't think anybody should be, should be judged too harshly on that. But we also have to know how to manage ourselves so we don't give out the negative impression that we don't care. So that's all we have for today. And always remember that life is a learning curve. You'll be watching Perspectives here with me on um, Arise News. See you next week. I'm Bruce Simeh.